oh. Center for Technology and Society and president and co-founder of Big Data Florida, uh, SCPA board member, and now SCPA president. Um, and actually, before I do this, very, we have a tradition uh, at the beginning of all of our meetings that uh, we always like to uh, ask anybody that's in attendance if they have any uh, community announcements. If anybody's got an announcement for uh, the good of the community, if you've got anything you'd like to in meetings or events that are coming up, um, if if you would like to raise your hand here on Zoom, remember that there is a uh, a little uh, button somewhere on your screen, whether you're on a phone, whether you're on an iPad, or whether you're on a laptop. That is a little button that says Reactions. Hit the Reactions button, and then uh, it has you can raise your hand. Uh, and so, if you raise your hand, uh, we can call on you. If if there is anyone who has a community announcement, I see Suzanne Taylor has her hand raised. And Suzanne, what is your community announcement? You have the floor. Phil. Hi, everybody. Um, yes, I'm the president of the League of Women Voters of the Space Coast, and I just wanted to give a plug for a meeting we're having next week. We're starting monthly meetings ourselves, and uh, we have a meeting next week on Thursday, January 12th. The meeting is from 6 to 8, but we have a social hour before then. It will be at the Iron Oak Post in downtown Melbourne. And um, the speaker that we have will be Vinny Toronto of the Citizen Oversight Committee, and he's going to talk about saving the Indian River Lagoon. If you're interested in that, um, anyone can contact me, of course, but you can also look at our website, which is LWVSC, League Women Voters Space Coast, dot club express dot com. Um, and my email address is sjtaylor1 at yahoo.com. Pretty much anybody who knows me um, can give you my cell phone number if you're looking for information uh, or if you're unable to find that. But we'd love to see it, see you there. It's open to everybody. Thank you, Phil. Uh, thank you, Suzanne. Of course, the League of Women Voters has been one of our strongest allies over the past two decades. We want to thank you for being here tonight. Great to see you. Uh, and, and for everybody that's interested in what's going on uh, with them, uh, it's a terrific organization, wonderful people, and they do the right thing. Uh, so <clears throat> certainly uh, the opportunity to go uh, look, certainly look at their website, attend their meetings. We highly recommend it. Uh, I see Vicky and Boko. Vicky and Boko has her hand raised. Vicky is a past president of the SCPA and a member of our board. Vicky, you have the floor. Thank you, Phil. I just wanted to invite everyone to join me in Orlando on January 22nd, the 50th anniversary of Roe v. Wade, which of course we have now have no constitutional right to abortion, but we're going to uh, rally and march uh, in Orlando, we're going to gather at uh, City Hall and march to the federal courthouse with Anna Escamani. So join me. That's January 22nd, 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. It's a Sunday afternoon. Thank you. That's Vicky. It. Thank you. Vicki, you have been uh, an amazing, amazing leader of our organization. And uh, thank you for your hard work uh, defending women's rights. Uh, this has been, this last year was just gut-wrenching and and until people stand up and fight for their rights, they, they're they not guaranteed, right? And uh, Nellie, I know you had something. You said something there. Nellie? Oh, uh, nothing, nothing. Sorry. Okay. Uh, Vicki, uh, your, your visuals kind of came and went on that one, but we definitely loudly heard you and... Uh, uh, can you tell us, by the way, is there a website where people can go and look for more information on the event? Uh, you may have mentioned it, I, and I didn't write it down. Uh, it's, um, it's, it's posted on our Facebook page. Okay, so, so for yeah. folks to go to our uh, SCPA Facebook page mm -hmm. uh, for more details to, to attend. So, and excellent. Anna actually is organizing it, so Anna Escamani's page also. Anna, of course, is a local hero and and a representative uh, in the uh, Florida State uh, House. And uh, 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 this sounds very interesting. So thank you very, very much. Anybody, and any other? Oh, go the, ahead. The, there's one other uh, event coming up, ML, uh, Martin Luther King Day. Oh, the, yes. We, all, we always have the, the march. We, I haven't gotten any information about that yet, but... The, they are having a commemoration at Florida Tech again this year on campus at the Gleason Center. And um, the keynote is Gail Montgomery. And there'll be two awards 
One is going to uh, our, our good friend, Alberta Wilson, and the other two, uh, uh, Gail Montgomery. So that's January 19th, Thursday from 7 to 8.30 p.m. It's free and that's an event, right? Event. Always, always excellent. Event, I, I'm not sure whether we were planning to be walking in the March this year, but we usually do. And yes. uh, certainly for those that are members that have an interest in getting out on, usually it's a, a, a brisk morning and a lovely walk. It's not a long parade, but it's certainly an awful lot of fun. And uh, we hope yes. to see you there. I see that uh, Carol Becker has her hand raised. Carol, you have the floor. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to remind everybody that tomorrow is the two-year anniversary of the attempted coup slash insurrection, mm -hmm. and uh, everybody needs to. I didn't see any local events, but there, is, I know there is something in Orlando. Um, I just wanted to make sure everybody's aware. I believe the House uh, uh, of Representatives uh, Republican Caucus is celebrating that event as we speak. Uh, by by, by <laughs> they just had the 11th attempt to uh, come up with a new speaker. Shouldn't laugh because this is really, really uh, does not bode well for our nation, for our democracy. And everyone around the world is looking at us. Um, some of our, our strongest opponents, some of our strongest uh, um, enemies are, are watching this very closely. So anyway, I uh, thank you very much, Carol. It is really, really important to remember uh, it, if you have not yet gotten your copy of the uh, s the January 6th report, uh, there are bound copies that are now uh, being sold, and it is uh, fairly easy reading. Uh, certainly uh, one of those books that should be on your bookshelf, and it's certainly uh, important to learn as much as you can to prevent that from happening again. Are there any further uh, community announcements? I do not see any. So it's time once again to introduce our new president. Uh, Dr. Scott Tilley. Uh, again, uh, uh, Dr. Tilley is beyond being the, oh, I see we have a hand raised. <laughs> Karen I Houston. Was just, uh, I was just mentioning, I saw Willie had her hand up. She didn't have a little hand raised thing up, but maybe oh. Vicky, somebody said what she was interested in. Oh, okay. I thought I thought she had a hand raised up before. Um, maybe her, I'm my mistake. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, Willie, do you uh, have a, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't see that. No, she didn't have any. And so that's, Will, you do not have an announcement? Okay, all righty. Uh, so let us proceed. Uh, Dr. Scott Tilley, once again, beyond being the president, the new president of the Space Coast Progressive Alliance, he is a professor emeritus, Florida Tech, president and founder of the Center for Technology and Society, and president and co-founder of Big Data Florida. Dr. Scott Tilley, congratulations, and you have the floor. Hmm. Thank you, Phil. You're welcome. And uh, I'll share, you know, Happy New Year to everyone. Um, I have to say I'm honored uh, to be elected um, president going forward, starting 2023. Um, until fairly recently, I didn't realize that this was, in fact, our 20th anniversary. Um, so we definitely have to do something to mark this occasion and to celebrate everything that's been done within the Alliance over two decades. Um, I, of course, I want to thank the... Uh, folks who are part of the board in 2022 and also part of the APC committee who made all the first Thursday events happen. And uh, as Phil said, I'd like to um, reiterate thanking our outgoing president, uh, Raid. Um, I've been president of other organizations. And of course, I'm sure that everyone knows that we are a volunteer organization and we rely on the efforts of everyone within the uh, association um, to contribute where they can and what they can. And uh, without people volunteering their time and effort, um, we wouldn't we wouldn't have the SCPA. So I appreciate that uh, in particular. Um, I thought, oh, by the way, I just wanted to throw out the, the comment that Phil made. I was making some notes about, you know, this situation going on in Congress where we got the, I think you said the 11th vote uh, right now. Um, but you probably know this is not unprecedented, but it has been 100 years since we had a similar situation where we had multiple votes for the Speaker of the House. Um, that didn't vote well. <laughs> so it's been 100 years since we've done it. Um, I hope for 
all of our sakes, they can sort things out. Before I talk a little bit about um, my thoughts um, and then invite you know, everyone's comments and input on looking ahead to 2023, I just thought um, I would share um, looking back at 2022. Um, we created a little flyer that we could probably post on our website if it's not already there and circulate that just summarized uh, the 11 different first Thursday events that were held um, in 2022. And I just wanted to go through them fairly quickly. Um, of course, we had other things behind, besides first Thursday events. So, you know, we participated in Pride and the, the uh, Puerto Rican Day event and a few other things. Um, so we we're stretched quite thin for a relatively small group, but the first Thursday events are ones that most people are familiar with. So just sort of going chronologically, a year ago today, um, we spoke about and covered the topic of cyberbullying. I happened to be speaking on that evening. And I think you'll see as I go through just these topics, you're going to see that some of them have been covered in the past. Some we will very likely cover again this year and going forward because they are timeless and unresolved issues that are very, very important to everyone. In February, the topic was families for safe schools. Um, I have to say it's unfortunate that is a topic that we will be revisiting uh, for the foreseeable future. In March, uh, the topic was a recurring one related to voters and voting and the democratic process. The, the title was Vote of Freedom. In April, um, it was again kind of related to democracy and voting, and the title was Tallahassee, what they did in your name. Um, I particularly appreciated this event because I have to say that until fairly recently, I didn't really track closely what goes on in Tallahassee um, because like many people, um, state level politics are something that requires a lot of attention to make sense of. Um, so knowing a little bit more and having followed this organization in the last year, it's been very insightful to find out who's doing what and the repercussions and the ripple effects that go on from what seems like far away, but of course it's still within our state. In May, um, we had a very interesting um, discussion which was called Ukraine, but spelled Y-O-U. Um, the message here is that things that are going on in Ukraine with a U um, don't affect only the people in Ukraine or the European Union and Russia, of course. They affect all of us. The subtitle was The Fight for Democracy at Home and Abroad. Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with, you know, every year Time Magazine gives out their person of the year. Um, this year's person of the year was uh, President Zelensky of Ukraine. Um, and of course, just before the holiday break, he spoke in front of Congress and many people commented that his address was very reminiscent of Churchill's comment about the situation in 1941 at the beginning of well, two years into World War II and how the the involvement of the Allies wasn't simply to help out England and France. It was in our own interest. In June, the topic was um, one that's near and dear to everyone who lives in Brevard County and the Space Coast. And that was related to manatees. And the topic, the title was The Struggle to Live, Why in Florida Indian River Lagoon Manatees Starve. Um, and I, I want to revisit this issue related to the Indian River Lagoon repeatedly because it's one of the most important environmental assets of our local area. It, it's, it's not simply an economic asset, which of course it is. I mean, it's part of our community. It's part of where we live. And... Um, you know, ironically, where I'm speaking to you today, I'm actually in South Beach in Miami, and I spent most of today out in the Everglades. And this is my probably my third visit to the Everglades and went on a tour again to sort of see what's been changing and, you know, get a glimpse of the wildlife. Um, saw lots of alligators, a few crocodiles, birds. Thankfully, I did not see any pythons, but I know that they're out there. Uh, no anacondas either, but I know they're out there. And the reason why I'm saying that this is somewhat connected is the Indian River Lagoon is something that is local, but it affects the whole state and everyone else in the area. The Everglades, of course, is like the Indian River Lagoon made it even larger. And what's happened to the Everglades is a shame. And it's in all of our interest to try and make 
the Everglades um, come back to life as the way it used to be. And the, in my opinion, the best way to start getting involved is to visit and experience these environments for yourself. Don't just read about it or hear about it. Go there. Go on a hike. Go on an airboat ride to see the, you know, the ecosystem. And then when it's actually in your face and you feel the heat and the humidity and the animals, and you realize how far this goes into, you know, into the distance, like, wow, this is a big thing. Just like the Indian River Lagoon and just like other things in, in our area. In July, um, somewhat related to our July 4th independence holiday, we had uh, the topic of plan your vote where our democracy is in danger. Really, that was a little bit about getting ready about sort of voter education, if you want, um, planning ahead towards the midterm elections that took place in November. In August, I have to say, unfortunately, we had to revisit the topic of gun violence. Uh, the This was with, um, with um, a group whose logo is Moms Demand Action. And it was really a very, very interesting sort of panel session on myths versus facts on gun violence in America. In September, another very timely topic with back to school for most um, K-12 students in Florida, the topic was Florida censorship. Um, the subtitle was obstructing education, but if you really want a simple takeaway, you could say it was book banning. And this is something that continues. We're back into uh, a new school year. And since then, I've been following this fairly closely. And of course, it's not, sadly, it's not limited to only Florida. Texas is another example of a state that seems to be gung-ho on banning books that, for the most part, I'm flabbergasted, you know, as a professor and someone interested in literature and writing that these important pieces of our history are being banned and taken away from our youngsters. It's just beyond the pale. In October, I spoke again, and the topic was on electronic voting, because we, again, we were leading up to the midterm elections. And uh, I was talking basically the promises and pitfalls of what is likely to be happening in our near and midterm, uh, not election midterm, near and short term future. Uh, we already vote electronically, for example, in Brevard County using those scanning machines. Uh, we don't yet use uh, touch screens that you might use at a supermarket checkout, but they're coming and they are used other places. And then the ultimate online voting would be, as the name suggests, you don't have to go to the uh, voting facility. You simply vote online. You vote on your by your phone, via browser. And that mechanism is used in many other organizations. I use them myself. Um, and the questions related to voter participation and security and fraud and foreign interference all have to be reevaluated within the context of electronic voting. Uh, none of them go away. Some are better, some are worse, but it's all related to being an educated or more educated and informed voter. So that may be something we might revisit again when, when you know, the scary 2024 situation re revisits the doorstep. And in November, we concluded with Mutual Aid Brevard, one of our local organizations helping people, for example, who are experiencing uh, homelessness and other challenges. And um, it was fascinating to me to hear how an organization that is completely grassroots, started as a Facebook group, has blossomed to help so many people, several of which were actually part of the panel session, who were previously, you might call them you know, they're like Cy Sperling. They're not simply a client, you know, the owner, they're a client. They were previously clients of this organization and now they are part of it, giving back to the people that they know need help. And there was some references to meetings that I did not participate in in past years where it was a kind of a meeting of the minds, if you want, of various volunteer organizations within uh, Brevard County, for example, and Orange County and associated areas of all the different volunteer organizations who are undoubtedly all trying to do their best to address this, this need in our community of people needing help, just to, you know, leg up. Um, and the takeaway I took from that is there's a huge challenge related to the, the not participation, but the coordination between these different organizations and who they address and who they, who they help. 
And the unfortunate side effect is we end up with a lot of people falling between the cracks. And we have a lot of organizations who can help, but it ends up they're not helping as much as they should be. So that's kind of a summary of, of 2022. Um, if you go to our Facebook page, you can get a summary, a brief summary of what's happened in previous years. Uh, one of the things as we now start looking forward to 2023, uh, I would like to do is uh, come up to speed on terms of our history, especially since this is our 20th anniversary, and start capturing some of the, at least the topics and the people involved of past meetings, past events, um, past members of the, of the um, committee, APC, that sort of thing. I think it's important to be able to have a little bit of history to reflect on what's happened. So we have a basis uh, to look forward. Um, what I wanted to share with you beyond, you know, sort of the looking back as we look forward is it's sort of a big picture, a very broad brush of what I think um, SCPA should be focusing on this year and going forward. And of course, it's not to say that hasn't been doing it in the past, it has. This is simply my perspective, my take on it, looking somewhat as, an, as a newbie, if you like, um, into the organization. And if you saw the flyer and the blurb for this, um, this meeting that I, I posted, I mentioned a couple of different uh, topics uh, that I said should interest all of us. In that sense, they're more like common goals or another way of stating our mission, our mission statement, if this was a corporation. For example, addressing the unmet needs of our fellow citizens, such as the Mutual Aid Brevard Group is doing. Uh, this is something that will probably never go away, and I believe it is part of the core mission of, of this organization to raise awareness of some of these issues and wherever possible, of course, address them. Uh, second, improve the lives of everyone in our community. Um, it's been, again, kind of an eye-opener when you start talking to people who have fallen on hard times and, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, the old saying of um, some people are one paycheck away from losing so many, so much of their life. And many of us are fortunate, and I do mean fortunate, that we're not in that situation. But we could be. And may you, maybe you were in the past. Maybe you will be in the future. We all share the possibility of experiencing that. And I believe, therefore, we all share the responsibility of addressing these folks um, going forward. And third, and um, this is rather lofty, but it's true, uh, make the world a more welcoming place where anyone can flourish and succeed. And I do meant, I did write that to be very broad, but I meant anyone, regardless of any stigma, you know, any, any prefix attached, whatever. I mean, everyone. If everyone can succeed, then we all succeed. And I don't think there should be anything in our society um, that is keeping people down. So, you know, most organizations have a theme, a mission statement, a vision, st vision statement, and activities. That would be my broad brush. We already have a set of posted values and principles on our website, but that'd be my, my broad brush, I suppose, of three facets of what our vision of, pardon me, what our mission uh, might be. The second thing I'd like to talk about um, is what I want to focus on through all of our activities in 2023 and going forward. And it actually builds upon something from last year that Raid introduced. And it's a simple phrase, but it has, I think, profound implications for our organization and for society in general. And that is the theme of the road to civility. If you are a political junkie, you know that most political conversations aren't conversations anymore. They're talking points and teardowns and memes and trying to score points on the least little misstep of the other person. That's not the way to get things done. We should be able to have a civil discourse with anyone who shares most of the same um, vision uh, for our community, for our country, and for the people in it, but they may simply have different opinions on the best way of achieving that. 
And that's totally fine. But right now, I think we're in a situation that if you start having those conversations, you get shot down, canceled, whatever it might be, and that we, we need to move away from that. I'm not being naive, naive enough to say that our wonderful group of folks are going to be able to change the national picture on this, but we can do what we can where we can locally. Um, so that means we should be able to address any of the issues that we're going to talk about in our first Thursday events going forward. Um, you know, I would call them big ticket events, like the ones we just I just summarized for you for 2022 um, in a very nonpartisan way. Um, I think it's important for everyone to remember that the Space Coast Progressive Alliance is not a political action committee. Political action efforts are part and they're one means of advancing an agenda. There are others which we will talk about and cover this year. But I don't want us to be on one side or the other exclusively. I would really like us to be for everyone, as I said, making the world a more welcoming place for everyone. Um, that really means getting more people, if possible, involved in our organization within our local community. And this is something that I heard the previous board and just the outgoing board talk about several times is we don't want to simply have an echo chamber where we're talking to see people who are simply nodding their heads in agreement all the time. To make progress in anything on some of these big ticket items, uh, you have to make sound arguments for people who initially perhaps may not share your opinion or your views. But if we are truly going to practice the road to civility, we need to engage them in civil discourse and conversation so that we can understand where they're coming from, they can understand where we're coming from, and hopefully make um, measurable progress and impact. Um, so that's something I'm, I hope to be able to address in the sense that, for example, whenever for every of our first Thursday events, as an example, somewhere in there, it should be obvious that part of the topic that's being addressed does in fact touch on the road to civility, whatever that might be. <clears throat> I also like to point out that before um, the holidays, I sent a couple of emails to members of the organization now. Um, that's because it was mostly um, myself trying to get up to speed on the thoughts and viewpoints of everyone who is present. And for example, I asked everyone to share what they thought are some of the important events or, and I'm going to use the word holidays in curly quotes or air quotes. I mean, like federal holidays, like Martin Luther King Day and so on, uh, that the Alliance should be addressing. Um, you know, Vicki mentioned a few that are coming up in Orlando or locally at one at FIT for MLK. Um, there's clearly more than our organization can address all the time. We know that. But I would like to have kind of a calendar of events that these are recurring topics that maybe, if not every year, then every second year, third year, whatever periodicity is appropriate, um, we address them. So if you have events and quote holidays or other things that are periodic that you think we've not addressed appropriately, then please let myself know or anyone else on the board. And second, related to this, topics that you think we should cover going forward. I read to you 11 topics, and they shared some common themes, right? Cyberbullying, electronic voting, gun violence, school safety, and so on. Um, the reason I mentioned those, and censorship and education, those five topics, personally, I think anyone, um, they, you should be hard pressed to, to be against the addressing of these important issues in our community. It seems like some people are sometimes, which leaves me aghast, but we need to bring those folks in. So, and again, in a, in a civil, civil manner, but there's many, many other topics that we can cover that all fit, I think, within our, our purview. And if you think we haven't covered them, I would encourage you again to communicate with one of us um, as we go ahead and start planning out the next few months and the rest of the year of the events we're going to cover. The third topic, uh, third question, I should say, and this one um, is 
perhaps the most far-reaching. Um, and the, the backdrop to this is, uh, I think in maybe February or so of 2021, um, the Alliance had a meeting and that was basically a looking back and re-examining um, the mission, if you want, of the SCPA. And I wasn't present for that meeting, but whenever there's a change of people on the board or more broadly, a change in context, political, societal, economic, environmental, which we're going through all of those things right now, I think it's prudent um, for the organization to just spend a little bit of time, take a step back and reassess some of our core values, core beliefs, and the roots for you know, why was this organization formed 20 years ago? What were the focus topics then? Are they all still applicable now? What has occurred and evolved um, as new things we should be talking about? So the question I asked <clears throat> on the people in the email is related to the third letter in our acronym. What does progressive, in quotes, mean to you? Is the word progressive does it mean the same thing in 2023 as it meant in 2013 or 2003 when the, when the organization was formed? Um, if you're a student of history, you know that the word progressive has been used, co-opted, abused um, over time. And I mentioned at the beginning about 100 years ago uh, when the Congress was having this issue of electing a speaker. It's very interesting that just before that period, right before... President Woodrow Wilson was elected. Um, now, someone I'm sure will fact check me on this, but I believe um, Teddy Roosevelt was running for re-election, trying to take over from Tucker Taft, who he installed as his successor, but then wanted to take over again. Does this sound familiar to what's going on right now between 2016, 2020, and 2024? <laughs> um, and the party he created was the Progressive Party. They lost the election. Woodrow Wilson won, running as a Democrat. But I think many of the policies of that time, of that party, we would not agree with right now. So it's important for us to understand the context and the historical evolution of what progressive means. Um, you know, the, there's there are analogies and synonyms to progressive that are commonly thrown around in the media, liberal, for example, um, left-wing, there's a pile of others. Almost all of these are usually reported in a very negative context. Um, that's something we need to address, for sure. If you look at the definition and the, the goals, some of which I've outlined to you, those aren't negative. Those are positive for everyone. And that's something I would like us to think about as well. Um, all of this, um, you know, leads, I, th I hope, to some clarity to what our mission and vision is for 2023 and going forward, building on everything that's been done before, but reacting to the new context and all those different areas that affect all of our lives, as I mentioned to you. Um, and ultimately, what I would like us to do is think about, it's great to have the meetings and participate in marches and all the other things that we do, and I'm not obviously not suggesting we don't do them. What I want us to revisit is, from all these different events, do they advance what we would like to see? For example, the three statements, a part of a sort of a vague mission statement, do they advance those goals? Um, do they make a difference? Are they real, measurable improvements in people in our local community, state, nation? and topics like Ukraine, international. It is possible for a group in Brevard to have widespread effect on national discourse and policy and other things that affect people's lives. Um, but we need a sort of a broader, um, you know, the big tent approach, I think I would say, so that everyone who has a voice could speak their voice and therefore can actually make um, measurable progress. Again, not that we haven't in the past. I'm just saying from my, my personal point of view. And I guess I would close to say, um, to do for all of this, um, the last part I wrote in the flyer is 
the SCPA is not a vague organization. For everyone who's a member, um, I would paraphrase what the conductor of the Brevard Symphony says. He said, he claimed, he would say, this is your symphony. And I would say, this is your organization. Everyone who's a member, um, it's, it's great that you can participate, but you need to participate more than just passively. It is your alliance and provide feedback and guidance to the folks who have been given the honor and the challenge of providing direction and activities, um, again, that advance our agenda to everyone's benefit. So that's what I would like to say if we're going for, forward for 2023 and afterwards. Mm -hmm. And Phil, I would say, and we certainly have time for any comments, questions, I'll take um, whatever anyone has to offer. Thank you, Dr. Tilley. I really appreciate that. And thank you for your wonderful words. Uh, we, we do appreciate your standing up to, to lead us and take us through the, the coming year, uh, which will have challenges to be sure. We, we don't know for sure what's coming down the road, but uh, we know that the past few years have been tough. Maybe, maybe mm -hmm. if we're lucky, the virus will, will abate and uh, we'll have more opportunity for a meeting, um, uh, maybe in person or in a hybrid state. And I suspect that may be something that you will want to uh, ask <clears throat> or talk about. Hey, you know, something that I skipped earlier, and that was we always like to talk to people about membership, being becoming a member of the SCP. How do you do it? How much does it cost? That sort of thing. I, I know that our treasurer, Carol Becker, is here. Carol, I don't know if you would like to uh, make a pitch for membership in the SCPA while we have a moment. Uh, can you can you tell us about being a member in the SCPA? Sure. In order to join SCPA, you can go to scpaflorida.com and there's a way to do it online uh, using a credit card. Um, family memberships are $35, individual $25, and student $10. Um, if you don't want to use the online method, you can mail a check. The address is on the website, but it's SCPA PO Box 412, um, Melbourne, Florida, 32902. Um, We'd be welcome to have your membership. It's uh, good for a year, and we go from January to January. Thank you very much, Carol. Thank you for your service as treasurer. This is, gosh, what, the fourth year you've served this as treasurer, or maybe more? No, I think uh, coming into the fourth year. <laughs> so thank you for that. It's it's a very, very important task in any organization, uh, handling the money, and you've done such a wonderful job of it for us. Thank you very much. Um, for anybody that has a question uh, to Dr. Tilly, to our president, um, again, as I mentioned earlier, uh, there's a little reactions button. Uh, here on Zoom, and uh, you can raise your hand if if you would, please. Uh, again, it's a little, a little different place, depending on whether you're working from a smartphone, whether you're watching from uh, an iPad, or whether you're using a, uh, a computer. But please click the uh, click the raise your hand uh, portion of the reaction there, and we'll know that you have a question for Dr. Tilly. So uh, you know what? Um, I while we're waiting for anybody who wants to raise their hand, I'm going to lead off by uh, take the personal privilege of doing that to say, <laughs> Doc, have you been thinking about hybrid meetings and what we might do? Uh, yeah. I know the board has been talking about this for a while. Uh, what are your thoughts? What are your what are your uh, what do you what do you think is going to happen? Yes, yeah, so we've been talking a little bit about. Um you know, a return to in-person meetings uh, or a return uh, would be a return. It would be a new mode, which would be hybrid. Those are in-person for those who can or want to attend. And then they're broadcast like this. We are tonight on Zoom. Um, at the last APC meeting, which was held um, last Friday, um, there were several people who expressed interest in investigating some other organizations who are already doing hybrid meetings a couple of local church organizations, other uh, local councils. Um, so that's probably what we're going to do as a takeaway to just see how they can do it. Um, we are a small group, and the ability to broadcast and, and so on on Zoom and, and then later Facebook Live, if we're going to do that uh, in a hybrid manner and to have it done semi-professionally so that everyone can hear everyone speak, raise questions, um, it's, it's not trivial. I mean, I've tried to do it in other places, and... I have to say for the other groups that I run, like Big Data Florida and so on, uh, we we don't do that anymore. We simply do only in person for now. We did Zoom for over two years. Um, there's no doubt that done properly, um, hybrid meetings have huge advantages because you basically are satisfying 
uh, both groups who want to who want or can participate and those um, who can't or don't want to for COVID and other reasons. Um, but again, um, there are some technical challenges we have to address with our smallish group. You know, that would be an example of things that I know that have changed over the years. Um, we are not currently meeting in large, you know, community centers with, you know, over 100 people and having lots of folks running the what used to be called the audiovisual or the AV uh, equipment. Uh, we don't have that right now. It's not that we can't, we just don't have it yet. But rest assured, it is something that is under consideration. Thank you very much. I saw Ryad, it looked like you raised your hand. Uh, Ryad, uh, our past president, is now raising his hand. Ryad, you have the floor. Well, thank you, Phil. Uh, and, and that was a good uh, good introduction uh, by Dr. Scott. Uh, Scott. I think it's a, a, to have having a vision and a mission statement is, is always good. And, and, and measuring what we've done last year is, is important. And I just want to, you know, I, I was trying to see how much of, a, of an impact SCPA does on, on, on our community and, and how, how much of an influence did we do to, to move the needle either way you want it to be moved. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you how do you measure how how can we measure how do you see measuring success going forward uh, to say that I we've done all this hard work all this efforts that we do um, what did we accomplish and what is the level of success that that is uh, that is that equates all the efforts that we put into into all these uh, meetings. Well, I thought of three. Um, this is, I thought about several because it's a it's a very important. I mean, it's it, to me, it's part of our core mission. Um, you use the term "moving the needle" in terms of our impact, um, and some of them are very inward looking. So, for example, growing our membership, people become members, as was described at the beginning of the meeting, um, and I think we need to be perhaps a little bit clearer about what is in the business world is called our value proposition. Why would you choose to become a member of the SCPA? Um, I personally think there's plenty of value. Otherwise, you know, why would we all be here? Um, but I think we need to communicate that um, and with a little bit more clarity. And I think many people would react positively to it. So one internal measure was simply growing our membership. Uh, second uh, might be, well, I'll take the Amazon or Yelp analogy. Good reviews, testimonials. If we have an event like Mutual Aid Brevard did, we hosted in November, if you ask them, how do you know you're having an impact on Brevard County, they might say, well, we helped n number of people go from homelessness and living in the forest to having you know, a roof over their head, food on the table, and they can point to them and count to them. Um, same thing with, for example, you know, the Daily Bread and other local organizations. There's data to suggest that they're making an, a difference. And the third, I think, um, would be affected by both of those together. And that is, um, I'll just call it PR. Having more people know about what we're doing. Um, and that speaks to one of the topics we discussed, I think it was last, last April about Tallahassee, what they're doing in your name. It would be good if more of the folks who are laboring away, toiling away in Tallahassee knew about what we're doing so that they may be able to help us and we may be able to help them. Uh, because although I said, obviously, this is not a political action committee, it was obviously naive to say that the, the role of uh, politics is incredibly important and make any substantial change in things that affect all of our lives. If they knew more about us and what we do, I think that would help both parties. So that would be three areas um, I believe would help. Yeah, and I would welcome others, obviously, but those are three. Well, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Tilly. I'm curious if there are any other questions here in our group. Uh, have I don't see hands raised. Uh, we're all looking forward to 2023 with hopes that, uh, frankly, we'll have you know, uh, a healthier, uh, more progressive community, one in which social justice uh, prevails and one in which uh, people are uh, able to, you know, afford 
a roof over their head, uh, be able to feed their children, to have good education. Uh, and those are all very important things for us to promote. Um, yeah. I'd, I'd love to see more I, people uh, interacting with uh, with our new president. Anybody? I, I hear Rod. Do you have something else? No, I just just want to follow up. I don't know if I lost my train of thought on this because you know when you the change is always hard in any in any in any anything you try to do, mm-hmm. and so when when we what we've tried in the in the past and we will continue to do so is bring people that really differ in your from opinion and i like what the doctor says in you know bringing people who have different opinions and you know and engage in that civil discourse and trying to come up to to, to a conclusion but at the end of the day uh, it, it, you know change in in this in in, in this country and all, all over the world is, is all about you know it's politics and money and hmm. and how do we you know we're 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 educational most of the time. We're, we're present education. We're educa- trying to educate people, trying to influence their brain. But at the end of the day, a person with a with few dollars more, unfortunately, can beat you to the mail to, to, to the ballot box. It's just because of and, and that's the challenge that I I'm, I just keep on, on going around that money and politics has taken away from all these exercises that we do from all these education and 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 that's what I was I, I just just want to add that to, to, to the mix of what you just said mm. and we need to expose that I think it's important that people who don't have the resources are able to uh, sh- share their views and have a say on that table in Tallahassee or in Washington it's it's yeah. not about if you have money you can do whatever you want in the Park County and, and unfortunately, we've seen it and we continue to see it. But, you know, at the end of the day, that's the reality. And how, to, how do we get closer to making an impact in that area and exposing that money in politics? You know, we, they allow us to donate $2,700 only a year to, 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 to people who are running in, in, in for any, any position. But there's PAC, PAC organizations that are there that are collecting millions of dollars and, and donating. There, there's, you know, you know, there's groups that are out there in, in pharmaceutical and in, 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 in gun, in gun making and in, in, in insurance that push money into, into, to, to these politicians and, and take away from all these efforts that we do. So exposing that, that, that circle, I yeah. think it's, it's, uh, if we don't expose it. We're just going to continue speaking to the choir. Unfortunately, people need to realize that your money is not going to continue to 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 own me. Well, if I could just you know follow up on that, I mean, one group, although as beleaguered as they currently are, would be journalists who are, you know, good true journalists are trying to root out and report on corruption and influence and the inner workings of our political system. That would be an example of folks that. If we could get good contact with, it would be great partners to work with, because you're raised right. I mean, we can't compete with lobbyists. Like we're not a lobby. When I said we're not a political action committee, I meant I really meant we don't have that money. Um, probably don't want it. I don't want to be a lobbyist either. Although I do want to have affect change. But as you said, money rules the world. That's reality. So what is the other ways we can influence or affect change beyond, um, as you correctly said, most of our activities are, you said, educational, raising awareness of issues, um, which is very important. We can't stop doing that. But its its impact is less than people waving a lot of money around. So perhaps uh, working with other nonprofits and other journalists might be a way of raising some of our concerns in a in a broader in a broader um broader world yeah hey dr tilly uh one of the things that that i benefited greatly of when i was in a leadership position your leadership positions is to to look back on on uh, folks who've previously served and we have vicky and poco here who's a past president uh yeah. looking at all the interesting past presidents you're know, talking about looking at the history of our of our organization when you 
to have those people in your con- list of contacts, I highly recommend it. Uh, yes. And and to make sure that um, they feel free to call you. Uh, I, I benefited greatly from the wisdom of, of my predecessors. And uh, it's critically important that for me, giving a little piece of free advice for it's worth, and that it's to stay close, stay in close touch with Raid El Shaibi. Oh, yeah. uh, and all of your other past, uh, both presidents, vice presidents, board members. Uh, and, you know, while while we're here together, I'm just curious if there are any uh, any past presidents, let's say Vicky or uh, our, our current, our new board members uh, who would like to add in. I, uh, Karen Houston as as our past uh, vice president. Karen, I see you get your hand up. What would you what do you have to to talk to uh, Scott about? Do you have the floor? Okay, well, you know, Scott, um, I, I totally agree with everything that you said. And one of the things I noticed that you said is that you hadn't been as I would, I would, I don't, I say, I'll say the word engaged as far as the political spectrum is concerned. Um, in my job, um, I, I, I lobby. You don't have to be a paid lobbyist to lobby. Lobby yeah. is simply going up and talking to those people that been put in the office representing us although they don't always represent all of us and um i tell you what if every person here were to ever go to tallahassee those of who have never gone uh you will come back uh an instant activist because once you see them in person and talk to them and see their reactions uh, to things that you're coming and you're passionate about and you have 500 people in the one room saying no 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 and then you have a panel or, or the committee or whoever you're speaking with, just go ahead and do it and just disregard what you've said. Um, that is a learning um, experience. Uh, you will come back as an activist in the community. You'll come back mad sometimes and you'll be passionate about it. And I think that every person in the, uh, here today should at some point um, go to Tallahassee, uh, especially when there's something that you really need to work. We got so many things that we need to, talk about we are you know we're a liberal organization and one of the things i hate worst of all is that being liberal is a dirty word when did liberal become such a dirty word you know right as i said yes yeah Yeah. so i I hate i hate all that kind of stuff and i stay involved and this is how i got involved with uh, progressive alliance because as a a labor representative here in, in brevard we go out and we meet with other organizations i end up joining them (laughs) <laughs> and um, in doing so, uh, we all have have things that are, are alike, that, you know, we have the same kind of concerns about the same kind of stuff. And some sometimes another organization may have something a little different than what you're doing. But most of the time, 80 percent, 90 percent of the same concerns uh, we have, we shouldn't still be fighting about insurance. We still should be fighting about employment um, uh, or or, um, or the unemployment system. We shouldn't be have to still be fighting. Like we've expressed our concern, but I believe that we have a larger majority that are not um, engaged enough. Um, they hear what we say, but they haven't experienced it. Um, they don't know the depth of um, what's happening in our uh, state politics anywhere. So maybe that's something that we need to try to find a way to do to help get somebody to tell a Hassie that has never been there and let them experience that. That's just one of the things I'm throwing out there. But, um, okay. I mean, just to, well, thank you, Karen. I just want to Phil just address quickly the both points. Uh, Phil's, I, I put it down as, I put it down as sort of an emeritus club. <laughs> um, and I did mention that I have a great interest in history and especially the history of this organization given its 20 year anniversary. Um, I was recently shared the content information for the two, I think the two gentlemen who started this organization, which I will follow up with. I would, I would love to meet with all of them that I don't know and just have a chat over coffee and say, you know, tell me a little bit about, you know, what occurred while you were, you know, uh, president or vice president at the time, what was the context and situation? What did you accomplish? Didn't accomplish the usual sort of thing. For other organizations that I've ran, I've done that as well, and I find it incredibly important. So yes, I'll definitely follow up. For Karen, what I wrote down is kind of, it's it's not being glib. I wrote down road trip. <laughs> I, you know, I began by saying the Indian River Lagoon is important to us. And here I am down in South Beach, having spent the day in the Everglades. And I said, if you actually go there, it does change your perspective of how important it is to the state. 
So I think what you're saying is go to Tallahassee, meet some of the movers and shakers, meet the people, um, and then come back kind of a changed person. I do use the word activist. I think that's a great idea. Um, I'm not sure how to make it happen, so I will be contacting you about that. <laughs> um, and uh, on a related note, you know, you mentioned, um, uh, you know, the AF, well, you didn't mention it, but I mean, there's ACLU, AFL-CIO, and other a variety of organizations in our community. It would be great to have a sit down, just one on one if needed, uh, just so we become, at least by me personally, become a bit more up to speed on what they've been doing and how they we may share goals and overlap uh, with our efforts. It goes back to um, making an impact. More together is certainly better than each alone. So those two things are very important. Thank you. Absolutely. And and it is important to know that so many of our members are are members and leaders of, of affiliated groups of allies. Uh, you know, many people talk about Venn diagrams where you have little circles of people and, and organizations in that community and how they overlap. And we have so many uh, leaders, so many influential people that are members of the SCPA who can mm -hmm. offer uh, advice and help. And and being a liaison is one of your most important uh, jobs, I guess. I see Ellen Jones has her hand up, as does Vicki. Let's go to Ellen first. Ellen, you have the floor. Don't forget to unmute yourself. Okay. Can you hear me? We hear you loud and clear. Yeah. Okay. We just lost your visual, though. Ah, uh, Oh, well, you're, you're just a big E. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is that OK? <laughs> yes. Yes. Big please. E. Please continue. Okay. Um, great job, Scott. Um, Dr. Tilly. <laughs> Scott is fine. I, <laughs> yeah. I wanted to ask, I was talking to someone about this today. What role do you think the uh, corporations that own, say, MSNBC, CNN, Fox, they pretty much tell their people the mood to set, mm. uh, what to say. Uh, do you think it is huge? There's a huge amount of that going on, strictly opinion, um, yes, boy, that's a really interesting and broad topic. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, absolutely. Do I think what I would describe, what you just said now is what I would call sort of traditional media, you know, whether it's MSNBC, more left-wing or Fox, more right-wing, uh, the very few who are left is more centrist, <laughs> whoever they might be. Yeah. Um, yes, they have a the huge influence, although at the moment, I believe their influence is much more on uh, reinforcing existing views. Mm -hmm. It's very mm -hmm. challenging to get someone who tunes in Fox every night say, "Have you ever watched C, you know, MSNBC just occasionally, or vice versa?" And the answer is <laughs> going to be, "Well, no. Why would I? I just want to tune in and and do a lot of head nodding." Yes, absolutely. That's bad. Mm -hmm. I agree. I was thinking that today. Bad, bad, bad. And that goes to, you know. I gave a talk on this a couple of years ago. It was called Social Silos. And I believe that's what we exist in, which is fed in large part by media. Um, I'm not sure how to change that. Uh, you know, Ray mentioned that m basically money makes the world go round in terms of affecting right. change. All of these organizations um, can and will change if their vi readership, viewership, however it's me measured, it's measured by advertising, of course, changes. CNN is an example of a company that seems to be going through a slight reorientation mm -hmm. with new ownership and a new and new CEO, in part because they've seen their viewership and hence their advertising dollars drop dramatically. You want to get their attention, that's the way to do it. All that said, um, you have to know that if you're talking to a younger generation, millennials, Gen Z, and so on, they don't watch any of that. They're not influenced by it because they don't experience it. They experience their siloed social media feeds um, and increasingly uh, things like TikTok. Yeah. I'm not sure if anyone saw the, the article, I think it was yesterday in the Wall Street Journal, 
uh, that talked about the two largest companies in terms of digital advertising, and that is Alphabet, which owns Google, and Meta, which owns Facebook. In particular, Google and Facebook. Um, you know, I often ask people, what kind of company is Google? People say search. It's like, no, they're an advertising company. What companies, mm -hmm. kind of companies, Facebook? They say social media. I say, no, they're an advertising company. You're the data. They're an advertising company. Between those two companies in Canada, it's a much smaller market. They control over 80% of the digital media advertising funds. 80%, two companies. Here in the U.S., there's been a sea change in the last year or so, and now they're down to about 40% or 44% or so and dropping. And that advertising revenue is doing to streaming services and shopping, like Amazon is growing up fast, and companies like TikTok, because that's where the younger generation goes to for everything, and that includes whatever snippets of news they might get. So if you want to affect change by addressing media, which is incredibly important and very challenging, however, you really need, need to think about who's your likely, you know, who's, as they would say, who's your audience, who's your reader, and how to, how to address them first and foremost. But just to circle back, the ones that you mentioned at the beginning, they're, you know, the large, the large media companies, they still have incredible influence um, wow. on what people think, and then therefore what they say and write, they just sort of parrot back what they've heard. And um, you, you probably know, uh, I can go on this literally for hours, but you probably know that if you get into a conversation, which is a paraphrase for argument of, for someone who, who's a strong um, proponent of one side or the other on the issues, and they say, they're, I only watch MSNBC, and I like Rachel Maddow, and that's it, or Fox, and I just like Tucker Carlson, he's my guy, and that's it, that's all they want to follow. Right. Um, if you try and get them to change their minds based on logic and facts, they're like, yeah, nope, nope, I have my own truth. That's not it. Hmm. That's our reality right now. So when it comes, if we take it back home to advance any of our own agendas of, you know, social justice or societal change, whatever it might be, you have to remember people's mindset. And as Reed said, change is hard. That kind of change is very hard. So we have to be realistic about what sort of things we can do. Not that we shouldn't try, but we have to be realistic about it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. And I see that uh, Vicky and Poco has been waiting. Vicky, you have the floor. Thank you, Phil. I just wanted to uh, second Karen's idea about road trip to Tallahassee. Great <laughs> idea. But we have an opportunity on January 11th to meet with our entire our legislative delegation meeting. It's the annual event before they go to Tallahassee. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure it will be on the government channel. If you want an education about local government and your representatives, uh, you want to see this or go. And uh, you can even sign up to speak. You've, you've missed the deadline now. Just members of the community, you can go up there and say anything you want in three minutes. We miss the deadline. You can go and sign up. And if you know hundreds of people have it, they'll give you a couple of minutes to speak your mind. But definitely, even just to go watch, I always find it fascinating. Mm -hmm. And all, all seven of them are here. You don't have to drive to Tallahassee. And it's a, an annual event. So if you don't get to Tallahassee in the near future, you have an opportunity to meet all seven legislators. Okay. Cool. Thank mm -hmm. you, Scott. Um, I look forward to working with you in the following year. And Thank I you. like what you had to say. Yeah, well, me too. Let's hope we can actually execute yeah. on some. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Thank you. That's all. Okay. Well, everybody, I think we uh, there are no further hands raised. And uh, well, actually, I see Ellen hasn't lowered her hand and Vicky hasn't lowered her hand yet. But I suspect mm -hmm. that we're uh we've already uh oh uh bonnie you just got her hand raised physically uh so bonnie you have the floor it's kind of an apc <clears throat> thought that i have that i'd love us to have a program on for those, the by the way for for those that uh, don't yeah. know ap yes for those that don't know apc stands for action projects committee that's one of our most important committees uh, and back to you bonnie excuse me to, uh, exactly what Scott spoke about so well and 
um, that we could actually have a meeting that addresses the issue of the power of money, not just as mm -hmm. Ryan was talking about in terms of elections, but how it trumps everything that is done here. I mean, they pour That was money. an interesting slip. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't a slip. <laughs> it, um, you know, they, they gave a million dollars or something to a gun factory to set up here. It didn't matter who yeah. protested or what. They, they tear down a museum of art. The values are so distorted here. And it seems to me we, we could compete with that because it's kind of the emptiness of money and profit against the beauty of life and the possibilities of humans. And there must be some way that we can show that. I mean, when something good happens, of course, the money interest tries to co-opt it. But um, yeah. I think we should try and develop some way of presenting the concept and showing people that they don't have to fall for it. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. These, these, uh, I tell you what, when, when you hear like that concept, it's like it rings a bell. Ah, uh, so yeah. many good ideas, so many good people, uh, and the, the, so many of our members have are full of ideas uh, and to echo uh, Scott's thought. And that is that uh, we need you to be involved. If you're here, if you've taken the time to, to dial up and join our zoom meeting, you're somebody who really probably should be more involved in the space coast progressive Alliance. And I know Scott would really appreciate your help Very much. Uh, as would our new board members. And, and uh, so uh, we're, we're a full sentence. Yes. Yes. Go ahead, Bonnie. I saw in the paper that the average income of our legislators is six million dollars. What? Really? Yes. Okay, is, I'm switching is to that, profession. Is that income? <laughs> is that income or no? Wealth? No, income and assets. Income assets. and wealth. Assets. Wealth. Yes. Thank you. Yes, definitely. So the average all. net worth is six million dollars. Yeah. For, net yeah. worth. Yeah. So how do you represent the average person who, who is struggling from paycheck to paycheck when you're so disconnected? Well, remember, there's, <laughs> there's, no, no, there's no one in the Senate who's not a multimillionaire, right? Just doesn't exist. Um, right. federal, federal Senate. So when we, we want everybody to have security, financial security, but when it gets to just protecting one's own millions or billions, <laughs> it interferes yeah. with a democratic society. Anyway. <laughs> we could go on with that well scott one of the things that we um thank you very much bonnie by the way i appreciate it thanks to everyone who spoke tonight um we always like to ask our speakers if they have an action item if if anybody uh you know it, it's, scott you're the new president do you have an action item that you would like everyone here uh to when we leave this meeting to uh, to do something to do with something that rather than just leaving and saying, gee, I, I saw the meeting. That's great. I, I got an idea. Yeah. What would you like people to do? Um, well, I'm going to echo some something that I said earlier, which is uh, I really do believe that this is when I say your I mean, everyone here and everyone who's on the membership and everyone who's interested in the alliance. This is your organization. Um, I can use all the help. The board can use all the help it can get in terms of setting direction, prioritizing topics. So if you have a few minutes after today's meeting, or maybe you've taken some notes, think about them a bit, let them, you know, digest them a little bit and then send them along to me. We can't, you know, guarantee that we can address everything. We're just too many issues, but we can try and prioritize them and address them. Um, if we don't, and we don't get feedback, we, you know, we pick our own path through all these and hopefully a lot of them align with everyone's interest but it's still better to get feedback and input from everyone who's chosen to be an active member of this because of the potential impact on our community. So that's the action item. Oops, yeah. on, our, on our chat, I see that uh, Willie just posted the uh, uh, URL for Space Coast Government TV. This is something that, you know, if you ever watch C-SPAN on the national level, we can tune in and see what's going on in the house or in the Senate or whatever that might be happening in Washington. 
But uh, Space Coast Government TV does cover uh, what's happening at the county board, what's happening in various committees, our local uh, offices here in, in Brevard. The, uh, on, the, on the chat, for those of you that can access that, just quickly take a quick look and you'll see that it's HTTPS, uh, www.brevardflorida. It, it's, I'm sorry, it's brevardfl.gov forward slash communications, forward slash Space Coast Government Television. Uh, that would, You can easily Google search that, but Space Coast Government TV is an interesting thought. So they'll, they'll be covering the, uh, the legislative uh, presentation, the, uh, the legislative delegation presentation. Uh, definitely worth interest, worth, as, as Vicky said, uh, I've spoken before that group on a number of occasions, and uh, it's good when SCPA is, has a presence there. Um, but the essence is, um, uh, who is it that gets to go first? And, you know, uh, who, in other words, who has the big power in, in Brevard County? Right. Uh, I, in fact, I saw somebody else had their hand up just a moment ago. Hand just popped up. If we could take one last question before we leave. And who was that? It was Larry. Ju Judith, uh, Larry. Judith Bush actually had her hand up. Mm -hmm. uh, Judith, do you still have a question? Her hand went down. I've uh, lost her. And it, Larry has his hand up too. Larry, I did not see it. You had your hand raised. The Larry Abdullah, uh, go ahead. Okay. Well, you know, uh, we talked about media, so I just wanted to mention, and 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 you know, we could make a list of to important topics that we talk about reoccurringly over the years, and media is one of them. We've had uh, two or three. I have to look programs on media, and uh, I I think that it's critical in a democracy to have a well-functioning media that tells the truth and is obligated to the truth. And uh, we talked about all the corporate medias. I don't think they're all, you know, can be spoken about in the same sentence. Uh, they, they have different, I think their differences can be on what they emphasize, but they used to have, and many major publications have an obligation to tell the truth, some do not these days. And then of course, there's social media, which is some see as an enemy to democracy. But I think that we should have uh, a media event again. In the past, we've had professors, uh, we've had uh, Florida Today. And you know, just imagine if Florida Today goes under, someone talked about, uh, Scott was mentioning how small they are now. and. Yeah and how important it is, what would not be covered in this community if Florida today went under. And we've also had FIT. And uh, so I think it's an important topic for us to return to, regardless of who we have as speakers. Okay. Hallelujah. Uh, Scott, do you, do you have anything to close with on that thought to react to Larry's uh, comments? No, I wrote down, you know, we, um, you know, Bonnie mentioned the power of money. I wrote down the power of media um, as a, another good topic, a recurring one, as Larry mentioned. Um, and it's also related to Ellen's question, really. Um, so it's something we should address. Um, not quite sure how to do it yet, but I certainly wrote it down as something we should definitely, you know, have in our hopper as something that's very important. Um, obviously, I concur. I mean, I used to write for Florida Today for a number of years. I don't want to see it go under, um, but they're in pretty dire straits, like many newspapers and other journal journalism outlets in the country. So, yet another big topic we can discuss. <laughs> oh, indeed. Yeah. Well, thank you again, Mr. President, and uh, uh, again, congratulations. I think everyone in the room, if we could bring ourselves off of mute, give Scott a big round of applause. And uh, congratulate him for uh, taking the uh, the top leadership role, but certainly. Uh, <laughs> and congratulations, congratulations to our new board members. Uh, congratulations for all of you. Um, it, it could be a very, very interesting year, and uh, hopefully it'll be something where the Space Coast Progressive Alliance can make a, a difference in our community and beyond.
Mm -hmm. uh, I would like to remind everyone that we have uh, our uh, next meeting will be Thursday, February 2nd. Mark that on your calendar, first Thursday of every month. Uh, frankly, I think that there's uh, a couple of different possible opportunities for what that program is going to be. But make a note, Fe Thursday, February 2nd, we'll look forward to seeing all of you then. Those of you that are on the Action Projects Committee, I'm going to ask you to please stay on uh, the chat until... Uh, uh, and we can do a quick uh, discussion. But for the rest of you, thank you so much for joining us tonight. We hope you have a wonderful evening, a very happy and healthy 2023 to you. Thank you for uh, joining us tonight. Thank you for being a member of the Space Coast Progressive Alliance. Again, for those on the uh, Action Projects Committee, please stay with us. Uh, thank you. And have a short discussion. Have a beautiful night, everyone. <laughs>